You may hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Guys, there's nothing like boxing, and there are no athletes like fighters. What's up, fight fans? I'm Jay Cotto. Welcome to Jay Cotto's Fight Page. And I'm bringing you Late Night Boxing Talk. But first, get warm here. Hashtag come back to boxing. <laughs> Please don't make any sad news. You don't know the half of the abuse. What's up, fellas? Well, got some late night boxing talk for y'all. But first, let's get it. All my friends are here like to peace they out all my fellas out there. Here. Just been watching hashtag come back to boxing. And uh we growing. We growing. And just basically, man, you know, I'm very thankful and grateful for you guys, man. Each and every one of y'all. Um just wanna say, man, you guys are the reason why, you know, I push these boxing reports for you guys. The late night boxing talk series has been catching on, and I'm glad. I don't get any money or AdSense for this. I just do it out of the, you know what I'm saying? The pureness of my heart, man. I love each and every one of y'all. Well, let's get into this boxing talk, man. Negotiations for a Huey Fury and a Wilder fight is being made for 2017. Now, how I feel about that, I don't know. I really don't know. To me, it's another whitewash. Um, I think that uh, Wilder's just going to walk right through this guy. And... Uh, I don't see anything further than that unless, you know, whatever else is going to be reported for it, basically. But, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not really feeling that match. But let's see what happens, you know. Now, let me take you to MMA news real fast. Conor McGregor dominated Alvarez with a stoppage and wins his second strap, man. Congrats, you know. And uh, just do me a favor, Conor. Stay away from the white mink. All right? Hashtag Joe Frazier. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all don't know what that is, well, when Joe Frazier first fought Muhammad Ali in Madison Square Garden, he basically he basically wore a white mink. You know what I'm saying? He came in looking stylish with his white mink. And uh, you know what I'm saying? That was that was the day that uh Frank Lucas wore that alpaca hat and the alpaca mink, you know what I'm saying? But Joe Frazier came in with his gold Rolex, no shirt. And the white ass mink. He was looking tight. You know what I'm saying? 78. He was looking good. And basically, man, I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? He, he tried to steal his swag. I didn't like that too much. I really didn't like that too much. So, Connor, man, stop biting off of boxing and talking bad about boxing. You know, you, you can't have it two ways. You know what I'm saying? Just basically, congratulations to you on your second strap. And um, I hope Woodley's next. Because my money's going to be on Woodley. Not hating. I'm just saying. And, uh, well, basically... Everybody's anticipating this one. It's the big one. Kovalev versus Ward. And it's very anticipated by us fight fans. I'm just hoping that this is a good fight. I hope it doesn't lack any type of action. I hope it's an action personified fight. Everybody is looking for a bomb burner. Now, I know it's difficult because we're not in there. But at the same time, I'm hoping these guys give us a bomb burner, man. There's nothing more than a good action-packed fight. I expect these guys to play chess, hard chess. You know what I mean? We're going to see a lot of footwork. I don't expect any running. 
I expect I expect evasiveness. No bicycle. You know what I'm saying? No type of bicycles in this match. And um I think they're both gonna bring the best out of each other, man. Hashtag come back to boxing. I hope this one goes down in this era as one of the best fights. You know what I'm saying? And possibly fight of the year. I'm hoping for it, man. I'm really hoping for it. You know, I have a lot of faith in Ward, I have a lot of faith in Kovalev. I think these two are gonna give us one hell of a match. I'm not gonna say anything more about it, man. I know you motherfuckers are waiting. So am I. Excuse me, Lord, for cursing. And uh well, Carl Frotch wants the GG fight. The GG excuse me, he wants the triple G fight. And uh he wants it at 172 pounds, you see. GGG wanted it at 166. But um the thing for me is Carl Frotch hasn't fought since 2014. So to me, that's kind of like, eh, but to bring the vet back out of, out of retirement for this, I mean, um, let's call a spade a spade. I think GGG is just going to walk right through him. I don't think no type of training as to sparring is going to callous Carl Frotch's body after being off those two years, man. You know what I'm saying? I feel that this is going to be one of those fights where he's going to look good for, you know, maybe three or four rounds. Then after that, it's just a wrap. Um, I just hope it's made. I mean, because nobody else is going to step up to the plate. So, guys, what can we say? You know what I mean? We all know what Carl Frost can do. We all know what Triple G can do. So let's not down this fight because Carl Frotch might come back rejuvenated at his age. Yes. What is it? Uh, 30, 38, 39. Right. He might come back rejuvenated. I mean, you know what I mean? Let's see what happens. We all know Carl Frotch can fight. And Carl Frotch said that he would dip and dive. Meaning he'll, you know what I'm saying? Be very evasive and, and you know, against GGG. And a lot of fighters haven't been able to do that. A lot of fight, a lot of fighters have not been able to do that against GGG. A lot of fighters just stand there. A lot of fighters just get walked down. You know what I mean? Once they feel the power. But let's see what happens, man. Let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot of faith in this fight. But at the same time, I feel what most fight fans are saying about, about Carl Frotch being, you know, retired and coming back. You know, I mean, there's no one else out there for him. Everybody don't want to fight GGG. And GGG has a mission. He wants to clean out 160 and go up to 168. I don't blame the man. So he's on the way. He's, he's fighting everybody. Got to give it to him. Now, <sighs> yeah, Manny Pacquiao hints at a May Pack 2 with pictures inside the jacket that he was wearing on an Instagram picture. He had himself on the left side, which is kind of clever because he's a lefty. You know what I'm saying? A picture of himself. Then on the right side, because, you know, Mayweather, the prize fighter from Vegas, is a righty. So he basically had Floyd Mayweather on the right side and um it was color you know color you know pictures were in color inside the nice sports jacket he had on very clever and that's just a hint everybody everybody wants that fight i've been thinking about it and you know what pacquiao is possibly a hundred percent i we all know pacquiao's gonna go out and fight you know what i'm saying i'm just worried about the prize fighter from vegas i'm worried about floyd mayweather jr coming out and giving us a Barney session. You know what I'm saying? All these hugs and shit. And, okay, it's strategic, yeah. But, come on, dogs, come on. I mean, if you if, if you don't know your fight history, Mitch Green, he got two points taken away for holding on Mike Tyson so much. You know what I'm saying? This, this rule needs to come into effect in this era as well. They have to start enforcing these laws because we're not going to go for that again. Especially if it's going to have a $100 price tag. Let's get it. Now, I want this fight to be a chess match. Last fight, and you can do the math, do the research, it's there. These guys 
held on. Out of 36 minutes, 19 minutes, they held for 19 freaking minutes. I don't want that. I want an action-packed, action-personified, gonads on the table fight. Let's get it. You live in on the psychopath sitting next to you. You live in on the murderer sitting next to you. You think that I get this sitting next to you. But after all I say, please don't forget. That's what I want. An action personified fight. If I'm going to pay $79.95, because I don't it's gonna be like $80, $89, $85. If 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 Floyd and Manny are gonna fight again. And if I'm going to waste my brain mineral and watching that, if I'm going to burn my iris out on the TV, because that's basically what the TV does, I want to see an action personified fight, man. I want to see a fight. I don't want to see no hugging. You know what I'm saying? And and guys, all the, all the Manny Pacquiao detractors, Floyd Mayweather was scared. Okay? Took him, what, six years, five years to make this fight. Excuses after excuses, advantage after advantage. You know what I'm saying? If this fight is going to be produced, they better be fighting, man. About maybe 10 minutes out of 36 minutes. Okay, that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? You can hold about that much, but guys, we have to fight here. You owe us a fight. I felt like you didn't, but you know what? Since you guys are coming back and you really want to give us this fight, and I feel Floyd's running out of money as well. Manny is not going to run out of money because he's a senator. On top of that, he's still fighting. And he's not running out of money simply because he donates. He just finished donating half of his salary to, you know, the needy in the Philippines. So let's get this fight, man. You know what I'm saying, guys? Evasive maneuvers. I can understand that. No running. No hugging. Fisticuffs. Let's get it. Now, Mauricio Herrera versus Pablo Cano is on November 18th. And I've got my money on El Maestro, Mauricio Herrera, a member of Hashtag Come Back to Boxing. My brother, you got this. Don't worry. You're the best inside fighter today. That's right. Mauricio Herrera is the best inside fighter today. Do the research. It's there. You know what I mean? Now, women's two-time Olympic champion, should I say Olympic gold medalist, Clarissa Shields makes her pro debut. On the War Kovalev undercard. And she's bad. I'm not I'm not only in looks, but she's bad with the hands, man. That's a bad woman. And she's gonna hurt whoever she's gonna fight. And I would like to see in the near future the undisputed, undefeated, unified women's champion, Cecilia Brockhaus. I would love to see her. Against Clarissa Shield, once Clarissa Shield Shields, you know, goes through the levels. I would love to see her do that, man. I mean, the women's division, one thing I don't like about Kovalev is he downed it. And a lot of uploaders don't like the women's division either. But you know what? This is a unisex sport, man. And I respect the women, especially retired Cindy Amador, the Scorpion, La Cantra. She she was nasty. Of course, she had to retire because of a detached retina. She retired on on my show, the in-depth in-depth interview series. It's on my playlist. Check it out. Cindy Amador, good friend of mine. And uh, I tell you right now, man, women's boxing. Clarissa Shields gonna put it on the map again. Uh, Cecilia Brockhaus, A lot of a lot of people don't don't know, but look into her, man. She she's undisputed, undefeated, and she's unified. She has all the straps. She's done more than what these men have done. It's crazy. It's crazy. So let's not hate, man. Support women's boxing. Hashtag come back to boxing. You know what I mean? Now, this is some sad news, man. This is some sad news. 
This is some very sad news I'm about to break. So let me just, let, let's get it. Deal with outsiders very well. They say newcomers have a certain smell. Yeah, trust issues not to mention. They say they can smell your intentions. Now, the trainer of Pound for Pound King and Junior Bantamweight champ, Roman Chacalito Gonzalez, has been declared brain dead, man. And remains on a ventilator after having a stroke and undergoing brain surgery for an aneurysm. There's nothing more that we can say here about this man except for thank you for bringing us such a young talent and training such a great young talent that's going to be one of the greats. I would like to give my advanced condolences to his family and to the boxing world, man. You know, we, we, we're, we're, we're going to lose a great trainer. You know what I mean? And uh, I just thank God that, that we were graced with his, with his, uh, with his experience and, and craft. You know what I mean? And passing it on to Chacolito Gonzalez. Now, Roman Gonzalez is going to have a hard time, guys. It's, you know, I, I just hope it doesn't turn out to be sort of like, you know, when Mike Tyson lost Customato, where it played a, you know, mental, it took a mental toll on him. This is going to take an emotional and mental toll on Chocolito, man. And those that didn't respect him, those that didn't agree with him being on, you know, the pound for pound list, which he deserved, highly deserved. I feel you guys have to just cool down, man, and don't, don't, don't disrespect the man. You know what I mean? This guy is cut from the Arguello cloth. Arguello, Alexis Arguello, that is the great Alexis Arguello, got to see him fight and gave him tips. And this is why he's a bad motherfucker today. Excuse me, Lord, for cursing. You know what I mean? You, you guys have to respect Roman Chacolito Gonzalez. He's doing what a lot of fighters don't do. The last fight he had, he felt he lost. And he's going to fight this man again to redeem himself. A lot of these fighters should take a, a page from his book. So I would like to say thank you very much and, you know, basically my advanced condolences, man. And uh, Roman Chacolito Gonzalez... No te apure, mi hermano. Todo va a salir bien para ti. What I basically said was, don't worry, my brother. Everything's going to be fine for you. Now, before I get into this other piece of bad news, and it has nothing to, it doesn't consist of death. It consists of fuckery. Excuse me, Lord, once again for cursing. You loving on the freak show sitting next to you. You love some weird people sitting next to you. You think I did not get it sitting next to you. But after all I say, please don't fall. Remains to burn fills a drug test for the Pavekin fight. Hashtag cheetah. Hashtag no good for the sport. And since I came down on Pavekin, I'm coming down on you, Remains to burn. What the hell is wrong with you, dude? What is wrong with you? Now, I knew you had problems. When you fought Wilder, you claimed you were sick. But personally, I think it was just straight up. That's that's just your level. You know, you're no good after four rounds. And now, with this being proven, man, you don't deserve to be in the sport, man. I don't care what anybody says. It's not about supporting any black fighters. It's not about supporting any white fighters. I don't care about any of that. I support boxing. Boxing to me has no color. And for this shit to happen, it's disgusting. Stuff like this, fighters should be banned for about two to three years, man. So they can learn their lessons, so they can miss the sport, so they can actually make a comeback. But this right here, you can kill somebody in that ring, man. Now, a lot of people might say, well, it's karma for Pavekin doing it. Okay, okay, all right, no doubt, 
No doubt. Now Povetkin doesn't have anyone to fight. But this here is no good for the sport, man. And I'll let any fighter have it. When they're caught cheating, he should be fined. He should be suspended. <clears throat> and that's just the way I feel, man. That's just the way I feel. That's a real scumbag move, man. What did you think? You weren't going to get caught? Don't you know that there's stricter drug drug testing policies now? Did you not know that, Stavern? I mean, come on, dude. Why? Why would you do this? I mean, we know why to get ahead, but why would you do this? This was your make or break, man. And you totally messed that up. I don't understand why you would do this. But I guess it is what it is, right? Disgusting. Now, Andre Ward says that Stevenson has to ask Heyman if he can fight. <laughs> Hashtag loving the Ward's call out, man. This is good for the sport. This is very good for the sport. I'm very happy that Andre Ward is getting good with his words. Before he was, I mean, he's still humble, but before he was quiet, you know what I mean? Everybody that talked about him or talked about anybody and, you know, that, that didn't want to fight or whatever, he was he didn't comment on it, but now he's commenting on it. And this is the second time that he lets Adonis Stevenson, or, yeah, Stevenson have it. And I'm happy that he's doing that. Because Stevenson, you're doing exactly what Saunders is doing. You're being a cover girl with the title. Then you're fighting nobodies. We're not having it anymore. And if Ward happens to defeat Kovalev, you know, you know you're next, right? So Uncle Al is gonna have to sign some sign some documents, which are called contracts, in order to get that fight to go on. And I'm hoping that happens. I'm hoping if Ward wins, that right after the match, he would call Stevenson out. Of course, there might be a rematch clause between him and Kovalev, but it's just the point. Now, if Kovalev wins, Kovalev has been after Stevenson for a long time. Hopefully, that fight will be made too. So a lot of you fighters that owe us. And we, we, we're coming to collect, man. We're coming to collect. And finally, congratulations to Jackie Chan on his honorary Oscar, man. <laughs> Let's get it. It's about time. Wait for them to ask you. Took him a long time. But he got it. Took him a long time. Jackie Chan is well deserving of that honorary Oscar. Now, if you guys don't know who Jackie Chan is, that's the world's number one action star. This man has broken more bones on his body just to bring us these action sequences, man. And everybody knows about his action sequences. And his students consist of Tony Ja, Jet Li, so on and so forth. This man is a legend. He's even starred in Bruce Lee movies, man. So you guys got to understand, this honor is way overdue. But the bias in Hollywood wouldn't recognize the man. But I'm so happy that Jackie Chan got his Oscar, man. That that is that is great. Jackie Chan, Sifu, congratulations, man. Congratulations. And this was announced by his American friend, Chris Tucker.
Man! I would just like to say before I close out, support my fellow friend, Patrice Griffin's two exclusive performing arts, all right? And you can you can catch her at uh, Instagram at uh, two exclusive performing arts and uh, the two exclusive performing arts dot com. You know what I mean? Support the sister. They have great shows, dance studios, everything. Get down with Patrice Griffin. Hashtag come back to boxing, my sister. Definitely, man. Get down with her. Now, this has been your late night boxing talk. And you can catch me on Facebook Live for live boxing news. Of course, I'll be bringing it on YouTube as well. But um, I'm here to serve each and every one of you guys, man, with the truth in boxing. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. God bless. Stay vigilant. Peace. Peace.